in his last interview with Shanali, your colleague, Mike Novogratz, said every company in America would be investing in Bitcoin like we've seen Tesla and Square do. But I just looked at a recent poll from Gartner that's showing just 5% of finance executives are even thinking about this. So how many companies are actually going to be doing this and how soon? Yeah, hi. Thanks for uh, spending some time with me. I think um, there's a few different things to consider when, when answering the question in terms of pace. Um, you know, when we think about the conversations we have with corporates and institutional clients and, and any part of those constituencies considering investing in the sector, um, you know, the first order problem is safety and are the assets that they're buying going to be safe and available and secure? Um, and the second order problem, particularly for the corporates, uh, is tax treatment and the way that particularly under gap accounting in the US, uh, Bitcoin is viewed as an intangible asset. They're not uh, unsolvable problems or things that companies can't get uh, comfortable with, but it does take a little bit of time. And uh, what's happening at the moment, you know, the, the big four um, auditing firms, um, most of the major investment banks and specialist firms like Galaxy are really working to educate uh, corporates, corporate treasurers um, and folks at institutions on how to think about that, how investors will think about that. And we're watching pretty carefully uh, the dialogue that some of the pioneers in corporate America are uh, having with their investors. So, you know, Michael Saylor at MicroStrategy, micro Jack Dorsey at Square uh, and others. And as we learn and experience more of how their shareholders are feeling about the allocation, I think there will be a growing comfort uh, in, in the Treasury functions at corporates um, to start to move forward and contemplate small allocations into the sector. Damien, you came from Goldman Sachs over to Galaxy. When you're talking to the big investment banks, what do you think their first moves will be in terms of their retail and institutional client base in crypto? Yeah, listen, I think um, most major banks, as, as Mike mentioned uh, earlier today with you guys, uh, at the moment are working on products for their retail, particularly their high net worth uh, channels. And so we're in the middle of... Uh, thinking through that with them and again, helping the banks figure out how to have a safe product uh, for their wealth channels. Um, and that's where we can, you know, particularly help architecting products, figure out the right way to custody it and understand risks. So I think the first uh, point of entry for the big banks will be there. Um, I also think banks are really thinking seriously about the fact that our sector currently has no access to wholesale funding. And, uh, you know, for people who know the sector well, they will understand that uh, interest spreads on a lot of the product that we trade um, are, are very, very interesting. And so I suspect um, uh, in the near future, you'll see some of the large banks um, starting to work with people in the sector like ourselves to provide uh, wholesale finance facilities. Um, I think when you look at the information that was uh, revealed today in the market, which is really important for the sector, and that was the uh, S1 filing of Coinbase. Uh, implicit in that is that they have done a lot of work with the SEC um, throughout the, the period of confidential filing in today um, to get the SEC comfortable. There will, there will be a lot of back and forward dialogue that we look forward to, to, to seeing once they go into their effective period. Um, but implicit in, in this being uh, released today is that their lead advisory banks have done a lot of due diligence uh, and become comfortable with working with uh, you know, this sector, in particular that company. Um, and so this will start to right. open the doors uh, in all the different committees and, and, and uh, control functions that banks have to being able to, uh, to do more things in the sector. And I think lending might be next after wealth. Well, on that note, we heard Janet Yellen earlier this week saying that Bitcoin is an extremely inefficient way to pay. I also spoke to Bill Gates who uh, is not bullish on Bitcoin at all. We talked about the possibility that Tesla could make more money on its Bitcoin investment than from profit on electric cars in all of 2020. And take a listen to what Gates had to say. Elon has tons of money and he's very sophisticated. So, you know, I'm, I don't worry that, uh, you know, his Bitcoin will sort of randomly go up or down. I do think people get bought into these manias who may not have as much money to spare. So I'm not uh, bullish on Bitcoin. And, you know, I, my general thought would be uh, that 
you know, if you have less money than Elon, you should probably uh, watch out. Damien, what's your response to that? Listen, I think um, it, it's difficult to take uh, one extreme response to how to think about this sector from an individual. I think when people are looking at the allocation of assets that they need to make with their particular circumstance, whether it's an individual, whether it's an institution acting on behalf of many individuals or pension plans or in a corporate, uh, as we talked about before, um, your particular circumstance is different to lots of other people. And the available asset allocation options that you have will be very different. And so I think when you contemplate what we see today as being the likely path for what people historically thought was a very safe asset, the US dollar, um, or gold, when you have the backdrop of looming inflation that is starting to permeate pretty intensely in markets with what we saw in, in 10-year bonds today, then I think you could make an equally compelling case that having a hard asset like Bitcoin that is uh, very secure, very easy to transact with mm -hmm. um, relative to any of those other comparable assets, um, then making a small allocation into this sector seems very reasonable to me. Um, subject to your own asset allocation requirements. Damien, at Galaxy, counterparty trading volumes grew over 80%. The counterparty loan book grew over 300% in the fourth quarter. Significant volumes you see there over at Galaxy. Can you keep it up, or was this just a standout quarter? Yeah, listen, um, the one thing we can't buy here is time, unfortunately. Um, and, and we're working 20 hours a day to service, um, you know, the... the heard of clients across those constituents that are uh, here and need our help. Currently, there are only a handful of institutional grade players in the market that people are comfortable um, trusting to do their business. You know, the, the safety element I've mentioned a handful of times is super important to all of the clients that I've grown up on Wall Street uh, covering. And uh, that safety requirement takes time. It takes time to walk people through diligence process. Um, the custody process, how risky or not it is to move coins around. And um, we are hiring as fast as we can. Uh, I think Mike mentioned this morning to you guys, we're trying to hire 50 people uh, in the first quarter to keep up with all of the client demand that we have at the moment. 